Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. My name is Vimal Singh and today we are starting a new topic which is DLP, Data Loss Prevention. So similarly like previous videos, this particular topic will also have multiple videos and that you will see in a series. So this is the first video where we are going to understand what exactly DLP is, why we should think about it, what are the benefits we have and First, we will understand all these logical concepts and then we'll see practically how we can configure DLP using Microsoft PoView. So let's get started. Let's understand what exactly DLP is technically. So let's first define what exactly DLP is. So we can think this DLP is like a organization's information bodyguard and it does not just stand at the door. It continuously watches over all of your systems, like your on-premises servers, your cloud apps, like Microsoft 365 and even laptop in the coffee shop. So if someone try to lick sensitive customer health information or any personal data, the DLP steps in. Like a bodyguard, stopping someone from carrying classified documents out of the building. And yes, it also helps us to follow important laws like HIPAA or health data, you can say, or GDPR for your personal data. Okay, let's explore why information protection and governance matter in our organization. So let's imagine you have a treasure just full of gold coins and these coins are your company's sensitive data. So the information protection is like putting a strong lock and alarm on the chest by doing encryption, access control or watermarks. And then top of it, we have information governance. And it's like setting rules for how long you keep it with yourself, when you're going to clean it, or when to securely destroy it. So both are critical. Because what good is locking your treasure if you keep it forever and forget about it? Let's explore the key pillar of uh, data protection. There are four primary key pillars we have. Let's break it down. The first one is know your data. It's very simple and important. So you can't protect what you don't know you have. So just like you do a stock check in your store and we, we can scan our systems to find and label sensitive information. It's just, just checking and labeling. The second one is protect your data. Means lock it up. Use encryption like a safe. Restrict access so only the right people can open it and add visual marking like a top secret stamps. The third one is prevent data loss. So stop accidental leaks. If someone tries emailing a customer database to a personal Gmail or maybe uh, external user, DLP can come into the picture and can warn or if required block it. And finally, we have govern your data. So it's just like milk has an expiry date. So data also needs a life cycle. Keep it only as long as needed. Then archive it or delete it securely. Do not keep it permanently with you. Definitely it will increase the risk. So that's the primary four key pillars. Now let's see how actually this DLP works. So you can think of DLP as a team efforts. People, process and the technology. All working together to keep your sensitive data safe. The first point, the people set the rule and know the importance of protecting data. The process are the policies that defines what's allowed and what is not allowed, like a playbook of data handling. And the technology, which includes AI and machine learning, which acts 24 by 7. Now, let's say someone try to email a Excel sheet with the 500 credit card numbers and DLP can scan the content, detect sensitive data using AI and predefined patterns and check your organization's DLP policy. If that policy says never send financial data outside, it can block the email, warn the sender or report it to the security. In short, the DLP is like having security cameras and guards that not only see what's going on, but also understand the rules and act instantly to prevent breaches. Let's understand the benefit of DLP solution. So first is classify and monitor sensitive data. It's very common. We talked about it. So if you don't know what you have, you can't protect it. So this classification helps you here. It's like 
putting labels on your valuables so you can instantly know what exactly sensitive is and who can use it also how it should be handled and that will help you to easily catch the misuses before it can cause the damage the second point that you can see which is detect and block the suspicious activity so dlp is like a airport security scanner for your network scanning your emails usb transfers and other exit points so if it finds something risky it blocks it before it can board the flight out of your organization right the third one is automate data classification so instead of relying on humans to remember every rule set this place dlp uses automation to classify files based on where they are stored how they are shared and what is inside them so it's like a smart librarian who organize your books instantly now the next one is maintain regulatory compliances very important so data protection law are also you can say optional like hipaa or you can say you may have personal data so they all have strict requirements and dlp gives you the reports retention controls and training support you need so you are always ready for an audit without breaking a sweat now monitoring or monitor data access and uses very important so it's not just about outsider sometime the biggest threat comes from inside and by tracking who can see what and controlling access based on roles so dlp make sure people only get the key they need for their job and nothing more it also improves the visibility and control of your data so it sounds like oh there are a lot of thing can be done with the help of dlp let's explore how we can do that okay so so far whatever the discussion we had on the basis of that you must understood what exactly dlp is and what would be the benefit of using it now let's see how practically we can configure it okay so we logged in to view and to create the dlp policy we already discussed you must have the information and you must know what exactly you are trying to protect so classify those information the first thing we are reaching out to this data classification section and we will explore the sensitive info type uh if you have gone through information protection uh, video series you must have the clear understanding what exactly it is and if you are already already working with this um data protection from the microsoft proview side then definitely you must be familiar with it if not let me just give you a quick overview what exactly it is so to classify the data we are using multiple approach one of the common approach is sensitive info type that microsoft offers you some pre defined sensitive info types already created as you can see at this place we have too many and this particular approach uses the pattern based finding or the keyword based finding so whenever it finds any you can say data which is already their pattern mention or the keyword mention it will identify and classify that so as you can see as i discussed there are many let's explore maybe some data which is license which contains the license as you can see australia or austria driving license number you may have some other data like acquisition or you can say you will have agreements or social uh, you can say contacts personal information like email address physical addresses and so on it's not mandatory we have to go with the predefined only as you can see we do have option to create our custom one as well in this particular scenario we have created one custom sid which is confidential acquisitions and there we have the publisher as you can say it's my organization once you have the uh, you can say classifier like sensitive info types who is ready to identify your sensitive data identify the sensitive sensitive data from your organization then top of it we are going to create the dlp data loss policy so data loss prevention not policy inside the data loss prevention we will be creating the policy so let's go inside the data loss prevention section and here we have something called policies if i'll go inside it it depends on the um, way you logged in it's a new portal or the old portal so there you will get some warning i mean notification that you can turn on the automatic policy protection for your uh, you can say shared in teams message whatever the files are being shared so let's turn it on and this is the start point to create the dlp policy so let's click on the policy 
as we discussed we have again predefined categories on the basis of that we can identify the data and start protecting it like if i'll go to the financial there we have all the templates available that is designed to identify or classify the content or the data which is related to this financial services similarly if i go and check it out say there are too many like german financial data and there we will have it will identify the credit card number or EU, EU debit card number from the German. Similarly, we have medical and health, and there we are going to explore all, uh, you can say data related to medical and health, and the uh, what kind of information it will protect, that is also mentioned here. Apart from that, we have privacy, and you can see we have, again, similar approach to identify privacy-related data. We have enhanced, and there we can also go and find out uh, business related individual taxpayer identification number or maybe the social security number would be there but we are not going to use any of this in our demonstration we will use the custom one so we'll see from the scratch so let's go and create the custom policy and let's go to the next now here we can provide the name for this dlp policy and description one thing you need to keep in your mind the description can be changed later but the name cannot be changed so uh, try to put the name which can be meaningful uh, now let's go and create this policy and here we are getting the location wherever you want to apply this policy so as you can see we have exchange sharepoint and other locations as well but what this location includes that you can also define at this place by default it's all and we do have option to go and pick the group that you would like to target similarly as you can see we have sharepoint by default selected all or we can go and pick all the a specific SharePoint site that you lot would like to integrate it. It depends. Similarly, for OneDrive, we can go and specify those things. Now we have team chats and channel messages that we can also specify and pick the specific one if it is your requirement. And similarly, if you can see, we have devices and we have uh, Microsoft Defender for cloud apps and so on. Some of the uh, you can say services uh, need some additional configuration that you need to do before protecting it through the DLP. So let's turn off some of them. Let's on-premises repository we are going to exclude right now from this particular demonstration. We'll go with this Microsoft official uh, or you can say Microsoft applications. Okay, so at this place we are going to define the policy setting. So if we, we are using the template base, so we can we use whatever the policy settings coming from the template or we can go and create our customized advanced dlp rules because we are using the custom section so definitely this is not highlighted we will go with this custom advanced uh, dlp rules now let's go and create this rule and we are, we are going to specify the rule name and there we are going to pick the condition as you can see we have two conditions here either we can go with the content contents it's like sit whatever it's going to find out and the other one is whenever the content is being shared from Microsoft 365. So first, let's go and pick this content contains. And there we are going to specify sensitive info types. Or we can also use trainable classifier. If you're not familiar with this, we have already created video for it. And I request if you wish to explore, you can go and watch that video. Here we have sensitive info type we just talked about it and now we are going to click and pick the sensitive info type we already created one custom sensitive info type so we are going to pick that one and if you want to pick from the existing one that is also possible so we are going to pick one from the existing one which is us social security number now we are going to add this so as you can see we picked the two sensitive info type and here we are getting the option like you want to go with all this or just any of this so yeah, the condition can be, in this scenario, we're going to any of this. Whatever is being fined, you need to apply this. Now, if I scroll it down, there we have still the other condition option. So we'll go to this place, and here we are going to pick content is shared from Microsoft 365. Let's pick that one. And here we are going to identify, the rule says, only the people inside my organization, or I'll say with the people outside my organization. So whenever it detects something is being shared, outside of my organization then this policy should come into the picture now if i scroll it down we do have option to set the exceptions that we can define from this particular place and now we are going to set the accent what action miss what accent we will use to protect those contents so if i'll go to that place 
There we have restrict access or encrypt the content in Microsoft 365 location or restrict third party apps. So let's go with this one. And here we are going to enable this restrict access or encrypt the content in Microsoft 365 location. And here I'm going to pick block for everyone or block only people outside of your organization. So I'll go with this option, block only people outside of the organization. Then we can have other option. We can restrict with the third party app as well. And here you can see we are getting this third restrict third party apps. It depends and it may need some additional configuration as well. So if I'll go to that place, there we have a Dropbox and there we're gonna specify send the policy math digest or maybe remove direct share link from the Dropbox. Now we do have user notification as well. So we can turn it on. And as you can see, it says use notification to inform your users and help uh, educate them on the proper use of sensitive info. So we can notify the user in Office 365 service with the policy tips as well. If you want to send the policy tip to the user that you can also send. And here we can send this notification through the mail and notify the user who sent, shared, or last modify the content. Now, similarly, we have notify the people, the customize, uh, customize the email takes, customize the email subject. That is also possible if you want to go with the custom content or custom body masses. Now, apart from that, if I'll go down there, we have something called allow override M365 services. So if you read it, it says clearly allow override from M365 services means allow user in this, 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 and term to override policy restrictions. So this will override if they have any. So require a business justification to override. The user must define the justification. And here we have also incident reports. So we can report, I mean, generate incident with the alert, which will have the severity medium. It depends, whatever uh, you, it depends on the rule, how you're creating, you can define the severity. Now we also have the option where we can specify the different set of user or group to whom you want to send the alert for this uh, incident. So we can go to that place and search a group of people to whom or the individual user to whom we want to send it. Now, as you can see, we can send this alert every time an activity matches the rule or we can go with a specific uh, threshold that we can define at this place. Now, once it is done, we are going to also specify use email incident report to notify you when the policy matches occur. So if you want to send it, yes, we can turn it on. And if I specify site admin or any other, that can also be added at this place. Now, we are going to save this entire configuration and we got the complete policy rule, which we defined at this place. We must review before going to next. Then either we can test it out first and make sure the policy is working as expected or not, which we are going to do slowly in our other videos. And then if you are okay and confident enough that okay, things are going to work as expected, now we will go and turn it on right away. And in our scenario, we're going to turn it on right away. So let's go to next. Once again, review whatever you did and submit it. Okay, so finally the policy is created. So I hope you got an idea what exactly DLP is and their benefits. And also we saw that how we are going to create the DLP policy. Now, from next video, we are going to explore DLP in some more, you can say depth, where we will see their output. I mean, the policy which we created, how actually it works and further more related to DLP. Thank you so much for watching. See you in next.